my name is Adam and welcome to the Fighting Fantasy playlist and in today's episode we're talking all about Howl of the Werewolf. Howl of the Werewolf is the third entry from Wizard Books and it was published first in 2007 by author Jonathan Green. The front cover illustration as well as all the interior illustrations were done by Martin McKenna who knocks it out of the park again does a really good job of all the illustrations um, there are quite a few illustrations in this book as well as there are more than 400 entries for this particular book which is just only one of very few um, books that exceed that 400 limit that usually all the fine fancy books stick to um, and if you turn to page 400 in this book you'll find that you actually get some special rules for a particular item that you can pick up um, once uh, you obtain that item. So 400 is not the winning move in this book. It is a really thick book as you can see um, and it's a really fun book and after we read the back cover of the story I'm going to tell you why it throws both all the rules out the window and yet sticks to all the rules from the original Final Fantasy series. So let's read the back cover. It says here, Lepravia is a cursed land, a chill place of snow-capped mountains, brooding forests, and mist-shrouded moors, haunted by the spirits of the restless dead. Only the foolhardy or insane would enter that benighted realm of predators. But enter you must, after a vicious wolf attack sets you on your path to murder and madness. Steadily succumbing to the beast within, you must seek out a cure to your condition before the next full moon. But how long can you can survive in a land where all live in fear of the howl of the werewolf? Um, so Jonathan Green, now I have to say that I truly believe this is Jonathan Green's finest work. Not only to date, but out of everything I've written from Jonathan Green, I believe this is his finest uh, work. It was actually written back in the days of the Puffin series, years before they stopped um, at the end with uh, Curse of the Mummy. Um, but it was only published in the wizard era, as it were, in 2007. And it's it, it comes from a place of the writer wanting to write a classic tale about the mythology of werewolves and surrounding that subject matter. But it, it actually stems from the Fight and Fancy website, where the author would go on to the website and have a look at the forums and see what people were saying and making criticisms about his own previous work and then taking them criticisms on board and creating a book truly for the fans perhaps I believe um, but taking all that on board and and running with it and um, that's what I believe how the werewolf uh, is now there's a lot different about this book um, and we're gonna get straight into it so when you uh, go to your adventure sheet which is like the classic adventure sheet you get you know um, and of course this is series one if you were to pick up series two your adventure sheet would look very different because you chose from one of three predetermined characters but in the series one book it's your classic standard uh, adventure sheet nothing weird there okay but when you go to say create your uh, skill stamina and luck the rules have been completely changed no longer for your skill will you just roll one dice and then that, you know, add six to that total, and there you go. In this book, it actually says for you to roll one dice, divide the number rolled by two, rounding fractions up, add seven, giving you a total between eight and ten for your skill. So, as you can see, it just completely throws out the way you generate your skill, and it's the same for stamina. It's uh, it's a it's a book that breaks all the rules, but yeah, at the same time, when you read it, uh, it felt like a proper classic uh, adventure book. And I would say probably if it was put up against anyone from the past, it's a very strong contender for being one of the better, really good ones that beats even ones that Ian Livingston himself has written. Jonathan Green clearly does his research when he writes his books and methodically plans out things and it's the first time as well that in the pre-space era books um, this is the first time anybody can use a gun 
a pistol, which you can uh, pick up a flintlock pistol within this adventure, and it's just it's just so cool um, to see like almost like modern technology in terms of you know the Titan world um, before you know you got into like Rebel Planet Space Assassin where there's lasers and stuff like that but it's a really really fun book um, and it uses code words and you know it's um, it's it's a book that you could easily pick up again but you've got to get through a lot of text first in order to get that adventure going you know I really enjoyed it I died about halfway through so I've yet to complete it but I will go back and complete it um, I'll be doing a third series of uh, the fight and fantasy playlist here in the second series I'm gonna go through and actually review every single book and give it a score out of 10 and then in the third series I'm going to play through and complete every book in the series so look forward to them videos but tell me what your your thoughts are on this uh, book you know tell me your adventures did you complete this book and what did you think of the book and in the next episode we're going for storm slayer okay so take care everyone and I'll see you next time adventurers bye bye